feel any pressure today? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of a headache, you know, the barometric pressure is changing, I think, or something like that, right? That's what they all so say. Are, are you that sensitive so that the weather changes outside are impacting you? Not really. We're just trying to make this up as we go along, but yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So we don't, we don't want to talk about the pressure you have for, like, not getting your homework done or your parents or not being able to see the girl you like. We're talking about the pressure that we feel around us all the time due to gas particles. Because we're talking about gas particles. This is the first uh, segment, video segment in our unit on gas laws, and we're going to learn about gases. And gases have four key variables, and one of them, of course, is pressure. pressure. So, so I'm going to write down pressure, and then what we want to do is we want to kind of define pressure real quickly. So pressure, uh, you've got to think about this room or wherever you're standing is, is a place filled with tiny little itty-bitty, super crazy tiny particles called molecules, molecules of gas. So let's, let's get a box going here. And so what happens is, is these particles, they're constantly, constantly moving. And as they're moving, so there's all the little gas particles, and they're moving, and you see when they hit the side of the container, they exert a pressure. Now pressure is a big fancy term. It's the force per unit area. So it's how much force in a certain area. So that's that's the introduction to pressure. We're gonna talk more deeply about pressure next. But that's the, so there's four big variables. The first one is pressure. I think it's the hardest to understand. Other are pretty easy. Uh, I'm feeling pretty, uh, whew. Should I take my shirt? No, I won't take my shirt off. Because it's hot in here. So the second variable is temperature. So if we take temperature and we draw another box for temperature right here, this is the temperature box. Again, we still have some particles. What makes, what's the difference between like hot and cold? Well, so you probably know this from before, but anytime you raise the temperature, things, molecules in particular, move more quickly. Uh, so you have arrows here that are kind of like this long, that's like how fast they move. But in my case, if it's hotter, then they're going to be moving faster. So temperature makes molecules move more quickly. So maybe that's an important thing. I want you to write that down, that the temperature is a function of how fast the molecules are moving, right? So the faster they are, the higher the temperature. The third one would be what? Well, um, uh, moles. Moles. Now that's a big fancy chemistry word, but moles really has to do with how many gas particles are in our box. So when we talk about moles, so moles, let's have more moles. Sometimes you've got more gas particles in the box or in the balloon or whatever container you've got than another. So the moles is how many, all right, good, how much stuff you've got. And the last one is volume. And that's just how big of a box you have. So if you've got a really big box, <laughs> this is volume. And so these are the big four things that we're going to be studying. So we talk about gas and gas laws. There's actually laws. We're going to discover that P, T, N, and V all play a role. So uh, these four variables, they're kind of buddies. They all mess with each other all the time. If you think about yourself with a particular group of people, you act a certain way around some people and a different way around other people. So what we want to do is we want to see what happens when pressure is messed with by temperature, moles, and volume. Is that kind of like peer pressure? Oh, pressure, peer. Don't do that. Oh, don't. Yeah. I'm, I, I apologize yeah. for that. Yeah. Okay, so tell me more. So, so these four variables, they all impact each other. And let's just, let's just talk about this for a second. So if pressure is caused by particles hitting the walls of a container, okay. right? So I have, I have um, particles in here, right? And every time that a particle hits the wall, it creates pressure. Pressure. Right? So pressure, 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 pressure. Now, if I raise the temperature, doesn't that cause my molecules to move more quickly? So watch what happens to pressure when I raise my temperature. Pressure, 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 pressure. And so there's definitely a relationship between temperature and pressure. Would you all agree that if I increase my temperature, wouldn't that mess with, my, wouldn't that increase my pressure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if I lower it, wouldn't the same thing happen? Yeah, yeah. So let's do this. What if I did this? What if instead of having it in this small container, what if I made it a much larger container? Oh, uh, and you get same number of, of, of same molecules. Same number of it? molecules. What's going to happen to how often they hit the wall? Pressure. 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 You'd be further apart, right? So it's not going to hit the wall as much, so it's going to be a lower pressure. Lower pressure. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then finally, what if we add a bunch more particles in here? What's going to happen to the, and by the way, he was, we were mimicking one of these saying pressure, but simultaneously, all, all of these are yeah, saying pressure at the same time. 
But here's the thing. If there's more of them, they're going to be hitting the side of the container more frequently. That means that the they're going to have higher pressure. Higher pressure. Now, here's the thing. What if I did this? What if I raised the temperature, but I also made the volume bigger? Well, you have to sit and think about that one, because maybe it's going to do both. Maybe they'll cancel each other out, I guess. And what if at the same time I added more stuff in? Well, you'd, it'd get all confusing. Right? So I'm, I'm going to give an example that you probably encounter every day in the hallway. So you know when you're walking down the, 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 the hallway and you see like a slapping circle going on and you're like, whoo, you're probably wondering what a slapping circle What's is. What's a slapping circle? See, I don't have to tell you guys here on, on camera, but it's when you see someone in the middle of a group of people and they're all slapping. And you're like, whoo, I want some of that, right? So you go in there and join in. And you realize that what you're doing really has no effect on that person. So what do you do? You're like, I don't think they're going to feel very good getting slapped. But, but again, one more me in there is not really making that much of a difference. I want to know what I'm doing to that person. So what do I do? I'm like, guys, Should stop. Should I file a claim against the stop. government for him? What's going on? Stop. Stop. Look what you're doing to him. Everybody stop. And so once everyone stops, then I smack him. Because then I know that what, again, this is not, <laughs> don't I don't recommend this. this. And parents that are watching this, I apologize. But if I smack him then, and that tear that goes down his face, I know that I was the one who caused that because there's no other sources that are also interfering with that. And so that's kind of what happens when we have four variables. All four of these variables are different influences on pressure. Unless I keep everything constant except for one of these variables, they're all gonna mess with each other. All right, let, let me see if I can understand this, Mr. Dimitritz. Uh, you're saying that if I want to study pressure and temperature, I keep the moles and the volume constant. So Absolutely. I'm just hitting one person, I'm the only one hitting them. Okay. Exactly. Poor example. But, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe that helps you understand it. But the point is, is, we, is you can only study it if you hold two of them constant. Is what you're so, and, and this is kind of how it is in life. If I ever want to compare one thing to something else, I can only have that one thing interacting with the other thing. If I have a whole bunch of other things interacting, you can't figure it out. I don't know what's actually causing that. And that's 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 isolating variables. It's a very big scientific principle. So it's actually correct, yeah. But so we can only do two at a time. So uh, we we kind of talked about this before, but let's 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 just think this through because there are laws that we're going to relate to these things here. But if you understand what's going on, you're going to say. Psh, I got easy, the law right. Easy. So what if we wanted to compare, let's just go pressure, pressure versus temperature, right? So, so we're gonna make the volume's the same, so the boxes will be the same in both cases. Bo right? Boxes are the same and, and the number, the number of, part. of parts. So like five molecules or seven, whatever you just had in there. So what happens if I, and we're, all, we're gonna be, just see what happens with pressure. That's the only thing we wanna very, look for. So if I raise my temperature, what's gonna happen to my particles, Mr. Well, Bergman? Pressure, 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 pressure. They're gonna be moving faster and they're gonna hit more qu quickly. So that means the, if the T goes up, the P has to go up. It's gonna go up at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Conversely, if my temperature happens to go down. If they go slower, then the pressure has to go lower as well. So yeah, yeah. we say that that's a direct relationship. So anytime, why, is it, why is that mean, what does that mean direct? So directly proportional means if something happens to yeah. something, the other thing does exactly the same thing at the side, same rate. As a side note, when we say direct, it actually means if something doubles, the other thing doubles as well. So it's actually numerical too. Yeah. So if you double the temperature, you'll double the pressure. If you half the temperature, you'll half the pressure. Absolutely. So now let's take a look at- Let's do a different one. Let's do a different one. Let's take a look at moles versus, versus Moles uh, versus pressure. Versus pressure. We'll keep pressure in the same spot here. Pressure versus moles. Again, the same box. So it's going to be at the same temperature now because we can't. We want to hold temperature constant. So we're constant. holding temperature constant and, and we're box. still holding so the, the, size, the, the box same constant. size. So we're comparing these two. Well, if I take my three moles of gas and I ask, what pressure are they causing, right? Let's call it three pressures. Three pressures. It's not a thing, but let's say it's three pressures, right? And then all of a sudden I put in a gabillion. I get all. Then there be a gabillion pressures. So it just kind of makes sense that the more particles you put in something, because there's going to be more collisions. So more collisions, it. more pressure. So, so again, the higher the pressure, the you higher the, no, the moles. More moles. The higher the p. And by the way, folks, Mr. Dimitrich has used a term or a symbol that we haven't seen before. The symbol for moles is an in. That's oh. Kind of weird. And so make sure that you note that when he's using this symbol in, that means moles. It's not a, a little m is for mass. Uh, so we ran out of letters and we called it an n. I don't know why. That's a really good catch. Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah. So all right. So we, we've what learned we about pressure. So that, that's also a direct too, right? Because if, if you lower, double the number of moles, you're going to double the pressure. If you cut in half, so it's a direct and it's double, triple, half, bazillions or whatever it might be. So we've done pressure and temperature, pressure moles. Should we do pressure and volume? Let's do that. It's the only one that's really left for us to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass the torch over to you on this so side. So I'm going to do pressure and volume. All right. So I've got a box here, but now in the second case, 
I've got a box that's much, much bigger. So let's say that double the size. So this has a volume of one, and this is a volume of two, but we're gonna have five molecules in, in each. Keeps the mole, that's keeping the moles the same. So what's gonna happen, Mr. Dimitrovich? To well, the pressure. Well, yeah, I remember right, pressure. Pressure versus volume. Yeah, pre we can't count pressure when they hit the walls. So would you agree with me that in this case, the amount of times that they hit the wall is gonna be much more, in fact, double the amount of times yeah. that these hit the wall. Because this, this it's bigger for them to hit. So if the volume is twice as much, the pressure here is gonna be low. So um, so volume goes up. up. This is weird though, this is different than the other ones. Yep. Pressure goes down. And what you just defined is what type of relationship? This is called an inverse relationship. And an inverse relationship is just opposite. If you double one, the other one is cut in half. If you triple it, it's cut in third. And, or, or if you cut it in third, it's tripled. So it depends on which way you go. So when you talk about an inverse relationship, one goes up, the other goes down. But it's more than that. It's mathematical. One's doubled, the other's cut in half. And what's really interesting is, you may not have realized this, but what we just talked about are the three most important gas laws that we deal with. And the reality is that people spent, like really bright people spend a lot of time trying to figure out the relationships. So it turns out there's a master equation that puts them all together. So you actually can sort of change all the variables, but if you know that one goes up and one goes down, it turns out here's the equation. It's very simple. P1 V1 over N1 T1 equals P2 V2 over N2 T2. Now that's kind of long and convoluted. Whereas We're gonna cancel out one of the variables a lot, but yeah. And, 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 but if you, this is your initial pressure, your initial volume, uh, number one, uh, this is the, the in beginning condition, if you will, the number of moles in the beginning, number of the temperatures at the beginning, uh, or the actual temperature. And then you do this, usually what you're doing is you're solving for one of the ones on this side. Because yeah. you're like saying, what's the new volume when you change the pressure or whatever? And if you notice here, aren't these variables P, V, N, and T, the four variables we just yeah. talked about? And so essentially what we can do in this equation, just like we did in our problem, is we can hold something constant. Now, if you hold something constant, like N, from well, one side to the other. they're constant, then they are canceling. They so just disappear. PV over T. Yeah. What if we held the moles constant and also the temperature constant? Well, then it would just be PV equals PV. So, that's, so this monster equation, which we call the combined gas law, we're rarely going to use all eight of these variables. In fact, we're going to very quickly um, become proficient at canceling out units that are constant. But this is an exciting unit. I can't even wait. Like I've, I've been telling my students this in advance, Mr. Berman, but some of the demos we're gonna do are just outrageous. I think you're gonna love this. Any parting thoughts on this? Pressure, pressure, pressure. <laughs> Don't start slapping circles. If you slap somebody, I'm slapping you. Yeah. I'm actually gonna come in and slap you. The yeah. one who slap, the slapper will become the slappy. Uh, we're gonna pretend all of this didn't happen. It's in your imagination. You guys have a blessed day. Bye.